Hi, this is Annie from the ADHD Minimalist, and today I'd like to talk about what I disagree with Marie Kondo on. I'm married to David, and we have three kids. We like to make videos about simple living, and we have a blog, the ADHDminimalist.com, where we talk about minimalism and family life with ADHD. The other day, I went through all of my clothes. I've decluttered my clothes two or three times before, but I, I did the Marie Kondo thing. I brought all my stuff in my room and I threw it on the bed and there was a pretty big pile. And I went through all the things and asked what sparks joy, but then I didn't stop there. I continued and decluttered my clothes a few other ways as well and compared four different ways to declutter clothes. So if you wanna see that full length video, you'll find that on my channel. What I realized during this process was that there were some things, for instance, this top sparks joy. And this is from a famous Finnish company, Myrmical. And these are pretty expensive items and I was really excited to own one when I bought it and i bought it on a memorable trip when my sister-in-law and i took our our youngest at the time they were just babies we took them on a trip to norway together and stayed at a hotel and we happened to stop at a marmico store where i bought this and so it did have some memories attached to it it's not hugely sentimental because i haven't worn it that many times and i put it on again and i realized that i i like it and i like the crazy pattern and the colors and it does spark joy, but I don't like it on me. So unless I wanted to hang this on my wall and enjoy it in some other way, then it was time to let this go. So that was one thing I realized that some of the things that sparked joy when I started asking myself other questions like, is this essential? Or uh, if I'm gonna have a certain type of style, does this fit in my style? And the answer to that would have been yes, this would fit in my style. I like retro clothes, but is it essential? The answer to that was no. So I sort of went through and asked myself some other questions after I decided that it sparked joy. And I realized that, you know what, it's time for me to sell this on eBay and just to take the money that I get from it and cut my losses. And then I can be happy that someone else can actually enjoy it and that somebody else will actually wear it. That was one thing. This is another thing that came out when I was decluttering. And again, it sparks joy. I like the colors, I like the pattern. This is actually a jacket for a cross country skiing. And I kind of felt like from the beginning, it was a little bit too cold for me. It, it's pretty much just a shell and the front blocks wind and the back is a little bit softer because there isn't any padding at all in the jacket. I froze when I wore this by itself and it's sort of meant to just put it on over your training top and then ski. And I'm not really originally from a cold climate and I live in Sweden now. And so I probably always wear a little bit warmer clothes than Swedish people do that grew up here. And I'm not a super fast cross country skier. I learned how to cross country ski when I was, I don't know, I was engaged to my husband. And his sister took me <laughs> to borrow some cross country skis and to try it at a track for the first time. And I could not get up the hill. The first thing that happened was like, there was a pretty steep hill before you actually got to the area where you were supposed to ski. And I kept trying and trying and trying and after five times of just falling on my face in front of a bunch of other people, she had to get behind me and just push me up by my butt. And then I finally got up the hill and then I made it two kilometers cross country skiing, but every time we went downhill, I fell down. <laughs> so it was a kind of a trying first experience, but I got over that and eventually I really enjoyed cross country skiing. But I'm not a professional skier. I'm never gonna be super fast um, because I'm just not gonna put in the time to be super fast. I like to cross country ski when it's a nice day outside because you get out and you exercise and usually I like to do it with a couple of friends and talk at the same time. So that's my way of enjoying cross country skiing and this jacket does not fit into that scenario because I freeze. And so I finally decided this is also going on eBay. Someone who's super sporty and wants to ski really fast can buy this and get a good deal. Um, and that's okay. And I'm just gonna be happy for those other people who can 
actually enjoy and use the items. These are shoes that my daughters had and I think my son maybe even had these as well. And when I was going through items, this is stuff I, I actually decluttered a long time ago using Marie Kondo's Spark Joy method. And these both spark joy. But lately I've been kind of going through everything again. And I call this my spiral method because you know, you start out here at the edge and you think you declutter a lot the first time because you have so much stuff and maybe you do get rid of a lot of stuff, but you find out later that you were kind of keeping a lot of things just in case. And you weren't quite sure what you could let go of without regretting it later. And so you actually hold on to a lot of stuff the first round and then the next round things get a little bit smaller and you realize you can let go of more things and in the, the rings get smaller and smaller and smaller and then you get to a point in the middle which is what I would call Marie Kondo's click point. It, when you realize you have the perfect amount of this stuff in the house for you and that's going to look different for every single person. I mean we have a family of five. I have three kids and so we're going to have more stuff in our house than a couple would without kids or a single person would and so I sort of like the phrase uh, family minimalism because that sort of sums up my life. I have more stuff than a lot of minimalists would but the idea is to have less stuff in our house so that I have less stuff to pick up and manage and the kids have less stuff to pick up and put away. So uh, I found these again when I was doing a second round of decluttering. And I have sort of realizing that, I mean, I do have good memories associated with both of these boots, but if I'm gonna ask myself logical questions that go beyond the idea of sparking joy then I think I would keep this pair and I would get rid of this pair. And the reasons for that being these got used a lot more by my kids than these did. And then these are a better quality. So they're not sagging in the back, if you can see that. These are kind of sagging everywhere, like in the front and the back, and they were a much cheaper shoe. And then if I sort of just compare them in general, I have more memories of these. They're in better shape. And I don't think I'm going to regret getting rid of these. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so I'm going to keep these and I'm going to get rid of these, even though they both spark joy. That's sort of what I was <laughs> discussing with myself <laughs> as I decluttered. <laughs> it was that even though some things spark joy, because we have a really small house, I can't logically keep them. And if I were to keep everything that spark joy, I would run out of space. And so if you have the space in your house and things spark joy, then that's great. You can keep them. But um, if you live in a tiny house, and I would say we live in a tiny house, but it's not a tiny house on wheels. You can kind of see some of the house behind me here. This is our living room and part of the kitchen. <laughs> and this room, the living room, is the biggest room in the whole house. But we're five people and we're living in quite a small house. And so I have to make different decisions about what to keep than somebody who has a big house or that has a different kind of family than I have or a single. And so in the end, and I would encourage you when you declutter things to maybe start with Marie Kondo's method, ask what sparks joy. I think that's a great way to ease into the minimizing process. And, and then once you've gone through your whole house doing that sparks joy, then you can ask yourself some other questions. Like, is this essential? It can be a really good question. Or like if it was clothes, Joshua Becker says, what's your iconic style? Um, do the clothes that you keep fit into this style? And so you can ask yourself these other questions or like even comparing helps me sometimes. <laughs> so when you start gathering all your stuff together, you might realize that, oops, I saved five pairs of cowboy boots for my kids and I didn't even know it. And then you can be a little bit more logical about it and compare things like, do I like these better than these? And if the answer is, oh, I like these the best and I can get rid of three other pairs and keep one, then that's great. Or if it's, oh, I can get rid of two pairs and keep one for each child, you have three kids, then fine. But it's easier to be logical about things when you have a set amount of space to put your stuff in. Like when you decide that each child gets a certain box to put their baby clothes in and then that's all the space that they get, then it's easier to make decisions like, oh, I need to get rid of some cowboy boots because they won't fit and some of their baby clothes from when they were little are more important to me. And then you can kind of compare things and make that decision. 
I've also found that it's easier for me to discard things if I have a set amount of space for these items. So after I decluttered all my clothes again, I picked new drawers for everything. And I decided that this one drawer, which is, I don't know, maybe it's like this big, it is going to be the only drawer that I have pants in. Now that doesn't include winter pants or rain pants or that sort of thing, but all of my jeans, all of my comfy pants and anything else <laughs> that I had is all supposed to fit in that one drawer. And if it doesn't fit, then I need to get rid of another item so that I can make it fit, not start hanging jeans in my closet because I also have a limited space in my closet. <laughs> so that's sort of my way of like setting a boundary for myself to keep things going out at the same rate that they're coming in. And don't get me wrong, I do really appreciate Marie Kondo and her method of finding things that spark joy. And that's actually what got me started on my minimalist journey is reading her books and starting to go through the house step by step, room by room. I didn't follow all of her advice all the time. I did ask if things sparked joy before I got rid of them. And I'm sort of a reluctant minimalist. On one hand, I had my son begging me to declutter the house. And on the other hand, my husband had been asking me to declutter the house for years. And I was the one who was really reluctant. And Marie Kondo's method of keeping things that spark joy, that kind of helped ease me into minimalism. But what I've realized is that my minimalism journey cannot end with Marie Kondo, but it was a wonderful place to start. I hope this video helped you think through how to declutter your home. And if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. <laughs> it's been fun chatting with you. Have a great day.